So actually, that was my neighbor's dog at like two in the morning. So yeah, very interesting. Probably gonna have a talk with my neighbor. Um, yeah, very interesting. Uh, I guess they left their dog. It's right now, it's like probably 45 degrees and they left their really small dog. I think it was a Cocker Spaniel outside in the cold. So it's just been barking this whole time. I thought it was my dogs, right? And um, I didn't understand what was going on, but uh, that turned out to be the neighbor's dogs. So <laughs> yeah, that is not cool, my dude. Not cool to leave your dog out in the cold. Uh, especially, I think it's a puppy or something. It's really small. Um, anyway, today I'm going to talk about alpha investments and a tough look uh, or tough talk investors go bankrupt. Now, there's always this opinion, and I mean, I'll just put it out there. The, when you make a decision and maybe Kevin O'Leary, you watch him on Shark Tank and he's talking about this FTX exchange and how easy it is to store crypto in the exchange and it goes to zero. Uh, when you watch these YouTubers like Graham Stefan, uh, Andre Junk, Meet Kevin, and they're all talking about the great FTX, right? And they're all being paid. Yes, you probably know that it is sponsored, right? That this is a sponsored person. They're not hiding that fact from you. Um, but, you know, people are still very upset and all these individuals are being sued right now. Uh, same with Bored Ape and Justin Bieber and other celebrities, if you will, who promoted NFTs. They're all being sued because right now it's everybody. Now, what does this have to do with alpha investment? In that video, I think he was very honest about the feedback he was receiving. He was receiving feedback about flesh and blood and Meta Zoo and the overall uh, negativity. A lot of people were quite negative. Obviously, flesh and blood and Meta Zoo, they're not doing very well right now. Magic is not doing very well right now. And when you told people to invest, and you can invest with me, I'll be your supplier, and I will sell you these heavy bags. Not only does he have heavy bags, but he was selling the heavy bags to the patrons. It can, and then the 6.9 happen, and the $1,000 promo, I can go on and on and on, but it, basically to recap, it's the same thing with sports card investor. It's the same thing with um, a lot of people in both sports card, Pokemon cards, um, same thing with Leanheart, he's getting a lot of negative feedback from his rare candy you know cool trainer ryan does a very good job of explaining why mystery packs and mystery boxes are so bad so you can go watch that video uh, about lean heart and pokemon and mystery boxes in general which is something i really want you guys to know is repacks and mystery boxes is it from backyard breaks is it from jab family i don't know but the overall sense is it from amazon is it from walmart the overall uh, sense is that mystery packs are not good deals and a reason they are not good deals is because the person controlling the mystery packs decides what the value is and often they're just trying to offload product that they don't want and they that they cannot sell and again cool trainer ryan he does a very good job of explaining why they're so bad um better than i could but i'm going to try in the next video now in that video, uh, we're watching this part on live stream and something really hits me. It's like a very emotional video. He's like, you know, it's, it's a very emotional video to the point that my own live stream, whatever they're called, uh, they turn on me. And then I, you know, I, I, I had enough, right? I don't want these, con I don't need to deal with these things, right? Um, I can understand why other YouTubers like Alpha Investment, they don't do live streams because they turn on you in live time. And so watching this video and in my stream, you know, after watching, I think they feel bad for him, but I, I don't know. I mean, he, this is my understanding, you know, when times are good and you make money and you give financial advice and, and again, quote, not financial advice, people take it and they make money. It's like a QB, right? A QB of a team, they, they disproportionately when they win a game, they receive the praise. They receive a large amount, even though there's other people in the defense, there's other people in the offense that did really good, they receive the accolades. And then when they lose, they get a lot of the heat, right? A, a random defensive lineman is not gonna get, I mean, unless they made like catastrophical mistakes. 
And this is kind of what the influencers and influencers since Firefest have been under fire and they've been sued. Um, you know, with FTX, BlockFi, a lot of these established titles, um, these, these, they had products that when times were really good and money was flowing like crazy, they were able to sell a lot and make a lot of money. And maybe at the product at that time seemed like a board ape, for instance, seemed like a really cool product to have. But now when times are tough and people need money and they need cash, they need liquidity, times are not the same and people have a different perspective. And this is something that I think Rudy is very well aware of. Um, I see a scenario where a person buys all the product Rudy has to offer. Uh, supposedly there's a tier called the $100 tier a month and you pay $100 a month to Rudy and you, bu you can buy more. I guess it's like double, triple dipping. I don't know exactly how that tier works, but you buy all this product, you hold it, you hold it, you hope it goes up in price and then you realize, you know, hey, wait a second, nobody wants Modern, modern Horizons. Nobody wants like Meta Zoo Wilderness or UFO. Nobody wants Flesh and Blood Monarch First Edition or Tales of Aria. So in your time of greatest need, when you're trying to sell your boxes and you don't really know how to sell, you don't have a TCG player account with reviews and you know the five stars and sales history, right? Because again, you're not a store, you're just an individual trying to speculate on boxes, which now that sounds like a bad idea. But back when it was booming, probably a very different idea. Even though the idea is the same, the way that we would look at it would be slightly different, right? Like Sasha T, for instance, huge, huge dude. Uh, one of, he could have been the biggest, I think the biggest guy in sports cards, but then he started doing whatnot podcasts instead of his you know, card videos, right? And then now he hasn't done made a video, as according to this video, he hasn't made a video in months. So he's out. Um, that should tell you everything you need to know. So all the easy money, all the all the money has already left the hobby. If the hobby, if you will. Marvel PMGs are down 95%. And it's just another day, you know, oh, it's just another day. It's like, no, man, we lost 95%. It's not just another day, man. We're like on the verge of bankruptcy, my dudes. Um, I can't imagine buying $200,000 of Marvel PNGs and then putting them at the same auction six months later and now it's only $10,000. I can't, I can't imagine that. And now again, was it the same serialized numbers? No, slightly different collection, not the same collector. So I guess you don't lose money until you sell, but still overall, it's a very, very like, you know, I, I think it's actually worth less than 10,000 now <laughs> if I had to take a guess. So when we have a, a situation that is just out of control right now, the economy is not doing well, people are very, very afraid and you know, they're trying to cash out. The only, if, if you don't have a TCG player account, you don't have an eBay account set up, you don't have any of these sales channels, then you probably emailed the guy who sold it to you, right? Hey, you know, uh, Rudy, you sold me these uh, MetaZoo UFOs or Tales of Aria, Flesh and Blood, or whatever it is, um, would you be able to buy them back? I surmise that is the type of emails Alpha Investment is getting because that is the type of emails I'm getting from his Patreons right now. Hey, you know, I have all these things and they, it's always the same thing. In the beginning, I thought it was kind of weird. Why does everyone have Modern Horizons War of the Spock Dominaria and Core, and I think the strange one was Core 2020. And I realized they were all just Rudy patrons. And that's what Rudy sold them in large quantities for magic at least. Um, many people have approached me for flesh and blood. In fact, there was a guy in Houston, he's selling his entire collection and he's just like, give me what you can for it. I'm like, no, I can't buy this. No, no, just give me, just throw me an offer. I was like, no, I'm not going to throw you. I don't know anything about this game. It's okay, I'll take it, take anything. You're fair, I, I trust you, take, go. And I'm like, no, no, I'm not gonna catch this game. Um, you know, I mean, it, it is what it is. And when times are bad, people get angry. When you mess with people's money, they get, now again, I'm of the camp that believes, hey, at the end of the day, it was your decision to make. You weren't forced to buy the product. No one like, you know, made you buy 
Flesh and Blood, first edition Monarch for 500 bucks. You thought it was an opportunity. You too felt like at that time that you could sell it for whatever you, reason you bought it for at 500 bucks, you thought you could sell it for more. Or you thought it would increase in price for more. That was your decision to make. You should, if you didn't do your due diligence, you should have, it's not somebody else's fault. But there's been a shift in how we treat the Kevin O'Leary's, right? Kevin O'Leary went from ha hating crypto to loving crypto. And the only difference was crypto gave him $15 million plus forget and then paid the $3 million taxes. So he actually got $18 million, which he says is 15 million. But most times when you give money, you don't also pay the taxes for the money that you gave as a sponsor, right? So that was very nice of FTX. I mean, God, such a generous billionaire, the most generous billionaire according to YouTube many influencers on YouTube. Now, I just want you guys to be clear about what I'm saying. What I'm saying is people are being sued right now. Tom Brady, I'm a huge Tom Brady fan. You watch the channel, you know this. I have a less, you know, I love Tom Brady. I collect his cards. I am very disappointed that he did not, he promoted FTX. I'll play that way. Uh, also a huge Steph Curry fan. Again, very disappointed. Um, you would think that somebody would do some type of investigation down in Bahamas, right? Uh, hey, you know, you could send that one dude from Firefest, right? He's He still wants to go to Bahamas. I mean, couldn't we just send that one dude, the, the scammer from Firefest, like Billy McFarlane, and then he could investigate, or, you know, give him like set a disguise. I, I, just, I just think that, you know, influencers, they need to be more careful about what they promote to who. Because when you mess with somebody's money, um, Doquan, Lunar Coin, for instance, there was a guy in Taiwan, he committed the ultimate, you know, a, a sin from the Bible, let's just put it that way. Um, and he left family, he left loved ones behind. And, you know, this is not a joke. You know, it's not a joke when you mess with somebody's money in their livelihood. Um, it's a big responsibility. And I don't care how many times you say, Graham Stefan says it's not financial advice. It is. He's telling them what to buy, when to buy, where to put it on. He's telling them the exact exchange to put it on. How can that not be financial advice, right? <laughs> I'm very confused. Um, I think if you take a sponsorship or you're somehow in bed with you know, a card game or something like that, uh, even if you do like say, hey, I'm not hiding it, this is the deal, da, 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 you still have to be very careful, very careful, because when people lose money, they get very angry. And people, when times are good, and those boxes are sitting in their garage or in their closet somewhere, they don't need to figure out what the money, they think, oh, hey, it's, you know, it's gone up in price, right? But then when they go to sell it and times are bad, reality kind of sets in and it's like, wait a second, nobody wants these. And again, it's not just alpha, it's, it's a lot of different things. A lot of different people I think are responsible for a lot of money lost. Now, I mean, how many people in a car boom can say, hey guys, settle down, settle down guys. No, that's not what a car boom is, right? A car boom is like, everyone buy, 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 buy. It's like a shots of tea, buy, 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 buy. Buy the $500,000 charge art from uh, Mealy Pops and uh, Car Kahuna, which Car Kahuna, I mean, turned out they sold a scam to Logan Paul. You can't make this stuff up. I'm, I'm so glad they still have videos about that and they didn't delete all of them.